Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be covering the next greater element problem. For this problem we're given two arrays, nums1 and nums2. For every position in the first array, our goal is to look at the same value in the second array. Then we need to find the first value in the second array that is both greater than that number and lies to the right of that number. Nums1 is guaranteed to be a subset of nums2, and both nums1 and nums2 contains distinct values. Pay attention to these two constraints because they're actually pretty important to the problem. This problem is a bit hard to describe and also on weak code it was a bit confusing. So let's walk through an example to clear things up. Let's say this is our example. We're going to return an array of the same dimensions as nums1. To find our answer, we look at our first number, a 6, and we look for the same number in the nums2 array. Now we look at the numbers to the right of the 6 in nums2. The first number that is greater than the 6 and to the right of the 6 is the 9. So we fill in the first position of our output array with a 9. Then we move on to the 3. The first number to the right and greater than the 3 is a 4. So we fill in the second position in our output array with a 4. For the 2, there isn't a number to the right and greater than the 2. So since there isn't a number, we just put a negative 1 in the output. And for the final number 4, the first number that is greater than the 4 and to the right of it is the 9, so that goes in our output. So the array 9, 4, negative 1, 9 is our answer, and that is what we'd return. Now that we hopefully have a better understanding of the problem, let's try and put together a brute force solution. The first part of our brute force solution just loops through the second array, looking for the next largest element, and we use a hash map to keep track of the next greatest values. Note that we might hold some unnecessary values here, but that's okay. The second part of the solution iterates through the elements in the nums1 array, looking up the next largest element in the hash map. It appends those to the output array to get the answer which we return. Let's walk through a few iterations with this example so we can get a better understanding of the solution. For the first iteration, i starts off at 0 and j starts off at 1. Immediately nums of j is greater than nums of i. So we add the key of 1 and the value of 6 to our hash map. This represents the fact that for the 1, the next greatest element is the 6. We won't actually need this one in our final answer, but that's okay. After adding to our hash map, we break, moving on to the next iteration of the i loop. Here i is 1 and j is 2. Nums of j is 3, which is less than nums of i, which is 6. So the if condition fails, and we move on to the next iteration of the j loop. On the next iteration, 4 is less than 6, so the if condition fails again. But finally, when j is on the 9, the if condition passes. So we add 6, 9 to our hash map, symbolizing the fact that for the 6, the first greater element is the 9. Hopefully this first part of the algorithm should make sense to you, so let's skip to the end of it. Before the second part starts, it should make sense to you that the greatest hash map looks like this. Note that for the values where a larger element didn't exist, like the 9 and the 2, we just leave those out of the hash map. Now for the second part of our algorithm, we initialize the output array, which is ultimately what we're going to return. This part of the algorithm just loops through the nums1 array, and if the element is in the greatest hash map, we add it in, otherwise we add a negative 1. Remember that we're guaranteed to encounter all the numbers in nums1 while iterating over nums2, because nums1 is a subset of nums2. After the for loop runs, it should make sense to you that our output array looks like this, which is correct. Hopefully you have a better understanding of the brute force solution now. Let's analyze the time and space complexity. If we let n be the length of the first array and m be the length of the second array, then the time complexity is m squared plus m. The m squared is for the ij nested for loop, and the n is for the final pass. This simplifies to o of m squared because n is a subset of m, so it's guaranteed to be less than m. For extra space, we use a hash map, and that can grow up to o of m, so that's going to be our space complexity. Now that we've seen the brute force solution, let's try and improve it. To get a better solution, let's actually go back to the brute force solution and look at what's costing us time. The costly step is the nested for loop. This step's redundant because it unnecessarily iterates over the same elements multiple times. Let's look at this for example. When i is on 6, j iterates from 3 to 9, but on the next iteration where i is on 3, j iterates from 2 to 9. Notice that this is redundant because we could have learned from the previous iteration that 9 is going to be the next largest for 3. So how do we solve this redundancy? Well, we need a way of remembering the numbers we have encountered, so that when we do encounter a larger number, we can say for all those numbers, this larger number is going to be the next largest. So for example, when i is on 6, we'll remember the 6, then we move on to the next iteration, which is a 3, 
three is less than six, so let's remember that as well. Now we move on to two, which is less than three, so let's remember that as well. And finally, we encounter the nine, which is larger than all these numbers. So we can say that for the six, three, and two, all their next largest is nine. In order to implement this, we're going to need to use a data structure which is good at remembering things, a stack. We're gonna use a technique that you might run into in other interview questions, which is keeping a decreasing stack. Let's take a look at the code. We replaced the inner for loop in the first part of our brute force solution, but otherwise the algorithm is pretty similar. While there are elements on the stack and while the current number is greater than the top of the stack, we pop that element off the top of the stack and add the entry to the greatest list. And finally, we add the current element to the stack once the while condition fails. The while condition fails when either all the elements have been popped off or the top of the stack is greater than the current element. This ensures that the stack will always hold a decreasing sequence of numbers. If you haven't seen this technique before, it might be a bit confusing, so let's trace through an example with code. This is the example from our brute force solution. We start off with num as the first element. Since the stack is empty, the while loop immediately fails. So we jump down and append num, which is one to our stack. On the next iteration, num, which is six, is greater than the top of our stack, so we enter the while loop. This causes us to pop the one off the stack and add one six to our greatest dictionary. We go back up to our while loop, and now since our stack is empty, we jump down and append six to our stack. On the next iteration, nums is three. The while condition fails because the top of our stack is six, which is not less than three. We move down to push three on our stack. For the next iteration, nums is four, which is greater than the top of our stack, which is three. So the while loop passes and we pop the top of our stack and add the three, four entry to our hash map. We go back up to the while condition. The condition fails because the top of our stack six is not less than the current element, which is four. Since the while loop failed, we append four to our stack. Now our element is 9. Since 9 is greater than the top of our stack, we enter the while loop. This causes us to pop 4 off the stack, and we add the 4, 9 entry to our greatest dictionary. The while condition passes again, because 9 is larger than 6. So we pop 6 off and add 6, 9 to our hash map. Now we jump back up to the while condition, which fails because the stack is empty. That causes us to push 9 to the stack. On our last iteration, the while loop fails because two is not larger than the top of our stack, which is nine. We push two to the stack and exit the for loop. Now that we've finished the first part of our algorithm, the second part is identical to the brute force solution. So you should be able to see how this ends up as our output, which is the correct answer. Now that you hopefully understand the solution a bit better, let's go over the time and space. Our time complexity is O of M because although we have an inner while loop, we have to take a holistic look at the algorithm. The while loop only runs if there are elements on the stack. Since at most m elements can be pushed on, only m elements can be popped off. So this while loop can only run m times over the course of the whole algorithm, despite the fact that it's nested. For space, we have our stack and our greatest hash map, both of which can get up to a maximum size of O of m. So that's our space complexity. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. This technique we use of a decreasing stack is somewhat common in stack problems, so it's definitely a good tool to remember and keep in your toolbox. Anyway, I hope this video helped your understanding of the problem. And if you did find it useful, please consider liking and sharing the video and subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching and good luck on all your interviews.